What would you do if you survived the zombie apocalypse only to end up on a ship that has been commandeered by zombies? Then you end up crashing near an island and have to survive the zombie apocalypse all over again. Would you be upset with the zombies? Or would you be even more upset that a gorgeous tomboy just saved your life and didn't even offer a serving of freshly squeezed woman milk to rehydrate your body? After all, that seawater was nothing but pure salt, and now your kidneys are about ready to commit Sudoku. Well, if that was me in that position, I'd probably die since I'm too much of a gentleman to ask for such a sacred drink. So where am I going with this? Who even knows? So can you beat Dead Island Riptide with only guns? Let's find out together. The game begins with a recap narrated by Perna, and she says that Logan never missed an opportunity to hit on her. Which is a total lie, by the way. Since I'm the little scientist that I am, I rewatched every cutscene and listened to every line of Logan's dialogue, and not once did he ever say anything flirtatious to her. In fact, they barely spoke at all. The only flirtatious thing he said, if it could even be considered flirtatious, was mentioned that he thought Xi'an was hot. <laughs> that Chinese chick's kinda smoking. Perna may be a liar, but you can't blame her. After all, the air must be pretty thin at the top of her pedestal, so the total lack of oxygen is probably making her hallucinate. The only thing I hate more than wiping my butt 30 times and still seeing poo poo on the paper is liars, so it's with great sorrow that I chose to be Perna for this challenge. She's an expert with guns, she gets to use a gun in her fury mode, and her skills revolve around gun upgrades, so choosing her was a no brainer. So anyway, the Aussies capture us, they test a new method of torture on us, where you have to stare at a bald guy while he admires your full head of hair, but fortunately, it doesn't work well under the influence of drugs, so we decided to try again tomorrow. Luckily, by then, the zombies will have taken command of the ship, so I had nothing to worry about. Except, of course, for the zombies who have now taken command of the ship. I had no way of defending myself right now, so all I could do was run past them all and try to find a gun. Unfortunately, guns only means I can't even defend myself against zombies in any way without a gun. So if they grab me, I just have to sit there until they chew my titties off. Because doing the button prompts makes me punch the zombie, which obviously damages it and would result in a fail. But in no time, I make it onto the deck and find guns right away. Of course, I would lose these as soon as the prologue ends, so right now, all I focused on was killing enough zombies to fill up my fury bar, so I could at least use that once I become defenseless again. Although, Perna's fury is indistinguishable from a pile of hot garbage, at least compared to the other survivor's fury. Sometimes it works really well, but more often than not, my normal guns do more damage but I did need to use it to avoid an upcoming fail, so crappy fury is better than no fury. After that, I kill the captain, the ship crashes, and we're woken up by you know who. I told her that washing up on the beach wasn't the only reason why I was moist, and that I was hoping for some hot girl on girl action, but instead she soiled my love gloves with a melee weapon and told me to go play in her treehouse. The treehouse part sounded cool, but I didn't want this medieval contraption, so I gave it to Henry. It only just occurred to me that the zombies have taken over the tree fort, so my current objective was to kill all the zombies, but I didn't want to use my fury just yet, so all I could do right now was watch and hope that they were capable of killing the horde without my help. When a survivor is getting hugged by a zombie, the only way for them to reject the zombie's love and break free is by getting someone else to do it for them. But since these selfish SOBs don't like teamwork, they would rarely help each other out when a zombie has them in a death hold. However, in my Dead Island 1 Paddles Only challenge, I learned that if you run far enough away from a survivor where their health bar disappears, the zombie lets go of them. So I repeated this process all throughout the horde fight, and within 25 minutes, they finished off the last zombies. Hordes are a big part of this game, but we'll discuss that in detail later, because right now Trevor wanted me to blow up the bridge with a flare gun. But I decided earlier that since flare guns, nail guns, and harpoons aren't technically guns, I can't use them for this challenge. So that's why I didn't use my fury yet. I was saving it for this very moment. However, you can only shoot in fury if you're aiming at an enemy, so I had to get creative. 
After all the zombies gathered around me or made their way into the camp, I would jump down from here, go behind the barrel, activate fury, and try to shoot a barrel by putting it between a zombie and myself. Luckily, one of my bullets grazed the barrel by a pube hair, so with that, the mission ends. I talked to Harlow, and she said we can high five with our crotches only after we've survived the zombie apocalypse. Unfortunate, but understandable. So my next order of business was getting my hands on a gun, because at this point I was totally defenseless. Since I couldn't defend myself right now, all I could do was run away from the zombies like an SJW runs away from a good argument, but luckily, the closest gun is only 300 meters away from my base in a spot that later becomes our second base called the Santa Maria Fort. A gun always spawns in one of the chests, and since I begin the game as a level 15, I could already wield it at this point. So boom, getting a gun is easy as pie. Getting my hands on ammunition was also super easy. It always spawns at certain locations around the map, but in order to retrieve it, I would have to go out of my way to travel and deal with scary ass zombies. I'm not brave enough or patient enough to do that, so I decided to just buy my ammo from merchants. Money isn't exactly in low supply in this challenge, since I don't have to repair weapons. And it's easy to find a crap ton of it, so I really had no problem getting ammo for the most part. One of the most important skills I had at the time was the one where I get 60% more bullets when I find ammo. So anytime I bought ammo, this skill would come into effect. And even though I only bought 15 rounds, I actually end up getting 24 per purchase. So now that I have a gun, and we know how I get ammo, let's continue with the main quest. In the next mission, I had to get a boat so we could go to Henderson, but Mr. Shy Guy here told me that they were out of stock, and then he said to check out the terrifying marina to see if they had any. So I went there, it was terrifying, I found a boat engine, but the engine was gone, because of course it is, and it only just occurred to me that guns can actually one-shot zombies in this game if you shoot them in the head. Something you couldn't do in Dead Island 1 for some reason. Anyway, I killed everything in the area, I fixed the boat, and when I hopped in, I realized that drowners are drawn to the sound of the boat engine. So from here, I decided to never use boats again since it was too risky and would result in failing the challenge if I accidentally killed one. Not to mention, we couldn't even use the boat to get to Henderson because the lagoon is surrounded by land and a giant waterfall. Well that was utterly pointless. So now Harlow wanted me to check out the bridge to Henderson. I went to check it out on foot, but unfortunately it was destroyed, so I told Harlow that it was more damaged than a porn star's butthole, and with that I completed the mission. It wasn't long after that I saved a man named Marcus Villa, and since I had to waste most of my precious ammunition saving this senile old dick, I told him that in exchange, he would have to let me adopt him as my new grandpa. He gladly accepted, but only on the condition that I beat his friend Maurice in a staring contest. It was dragging on for a while, and he was creeping me the fuck out, so I sped up the process with a 9mm bullet, and just to be extra safe, I got him a present so there was no way he could refuse getting adopted. In order to celebrate the adopting of my new grandpa, he sent me to his home to get a really cool map that showed another path to Henderson, but some dudes wouldn't let me in unless I got medicine for them. Excuse me, how the hell am I supposed to find medicine in the jungle? I called Dr. Jane for help, and she said that tree bark should help out the sick dude. Well, I really hope he can swallow pills, because if he has trouble with that, then he's really gonna have a hard time swallowing a 12 inch piece of tree bark. I returned with the bark, I acquired my grandpa's map, and when I returned to my camp to get some ammo, my grandpa was waiting here to greet me. He was rambling on about wanting to eat my flesh and saving the human race, but I thought nothing of it. That's just classic grandpa, the silly prick. After all, he does have dementia, so this is just his normal abnormal behavior. But then I lost my connection to Steam, and I realized that this message was just a metaphor. A metaphor for my grandpa losing connection with reality, because at that very moment, the Alzheimer's finally kicked in. He didn't recognize me as his granddaughter anymore, so he started burning our tree fort. But I can worry about his mental health later, because right now, a horde has descended upon us. At first, I was doing a really good job at defending, despite my low amount of ammunition. The aim assist would be screwing with my aim sometimes, but I mean, there's nothing really to it. 
just shoot anything that's undead and trying to kill me. When I ran low on ammo, I put my faith in my teammates, but I was really surprised when a thug punched Xian's soul out of her body. Nothing a little trial and error can't fix, right? Wrong. I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but Dead Island has the worst checkpoint system in the history of gaming, because everything resets except for the ammunition I used. So I had to kill all the zombies all over again, but this time I only had a single clip of ammo. Once again, I had to rely on my teammates, but we all know my teammates don't like teamwork, so obviously this made it totally unbeatable, and since I can't just restart the mission, I also tried leaving the area, which is impossible, and I tried saving and quitting, which also doesn't restore my ammo. So in the end, I had no choice but to restart from the beginning of chapter 3, and have to do everything all over again. My skills and level transfer, but not my inventory, so I literally had to start from scratch. Since I pretty much had to beat the horde on my first try, I made sure to stock up on guns and ammo this time around. If you save and quit every time you get a gun, they respawn in the chest, so I did everything all over again, I made sure I was stocked up on guns and ammo, and I even upgraded my teammates as much as I possibly could so they wouldn't crumble like a cookie when fighting the undead. Also, just to be extra safe, I went into the game files and made a backup copy of my save, so if I did fail, I wouldn't lose all of my progress. Now that I was ready as I'll ever be, things were going a lot better this time. The first wave of undead only had walkers and virals, which isn't an issue for me or my teammates, but the biggest threat was the special infected, like the floaters, thugs, and butchers that came in wave 2 and 3. I always targeted these big boys so they wouldn't demolish my teammates, and luckily they typically go down in 5-12 to 12 headshots. Wave 1 was easy, but now we were on wave 2 which had special infected and loads of common boys. So before wave 2 had even ended, I was already running out of ammo. But thankfully, the skill where you pick up 60% more ammo actually affects the ammo you get from tossing guns away. So even though handguns can only hold a maximum of 16 bullets, I take extra ammo than what the gun is capable of holding, which supplies me with even more bullets. So thanks to the extra guns, the skills I had at the time, and my fury, I was able to just get past the horde with 13 bullets to spare. I surely would have failed at this part if not for those three factors, so thank god for that. So anyway, my waifu saves us, we escape to a halai, and the mission ends. By the way, if you guys are enjoying the video and want to support the channel, then consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing. After that, I confronted my grandpa. It was my grandpa's fault that I had to relive all the pain I felt in chapter 3, but I know he couldn't help being a piece of crap because of the Alzheimer's. I mean, if you're psychotic enough to leave bread out to get stale in the middle of the zombie apocalypse, then it must be pretty severe. Even though it's only been a few hours, the precious memories we created together would last a lifetime. I couldn't do anything to help my grandpa any further, so in a final act of love, I, regrettably, shot him in the face. Rest in peace, grandpappy. Next, I helped Unt Scientist. I secured a new base for us so we could use the crypt to get to Henderson, but turns out it's flooded, so now we needed a pump. Since I'm the main character, I got elected to go get it by myself, and since I couldn't use the boat, I had to carry a heavy ass pump through 500 meters of zombie infested, waist high swamp water on foot which was actually safer than using the boat since drowners only get woken up by the sound of the boat's engine or if you touch them. Even though this was a mostly negative experience, something good came out of it. Carrying the pump and dodging the corpses made me develop the agility of a cat, the bulging biceps of an independent woman, and a phobia of all forms of water. So, maybe now that I had an irrational fear of water, Harlow would let me drink from her mommy milkers so I wouldn't thirst to death. But before she could even offer, I had to go get two HMGs, because using the pump is louder than 10 fat people falling down a flight of stairs on the 4th of July. So, I would need to use them to defend against the second horde. I swear to god, this is where the difficulty of the challenge just goes on a snowball effect of easiness, because these turrets just tear the zombies apart. And yes, I can use them since they're guns. Not to mention, the fences gave me enough time to kill the stragglers before they could kill my teammates. There was also extra pistol ammo in the base itself, so this horde defense was a piece of cake, 
taking only 6 minutes for me to kill all the zombies. Trevor gave me a brand new pistol as a reward for having to suffer through the last two missions, which were just traumatic experiences in disguise. I explored the sewers to make sure it was safe for everyone to travel through, which it definitely wasn't since I ran past most of the zombies and I even found shotguns and rifles down here thanks to the non-threatening smugglers. When I left the sewers, I killed Wayne who has now turned into a deformed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, I introduced some humans to my 6 shooter that definitely shot a lot more than 6 bullets, and now we had to fight Horde number 3. Hordes were no longer a problem at this point but rather a speed bump on my road of death. I wish I could say this horde gave me a run for my money, but at this point I had a powerful handgun, a spas 12, a radical assault rifle, and a sniper rifle that was long as shit. Not to mention I had another HMG for this fight, and there was no special infected that I could remember. So by the time we finished off the zombies, I still had a lot of ammo, and I just reached firearms level 10 so I could hold even more ammo than what I was capable of holding before. So we finally make it to Henderson, I get an awesome new revolver, and with that, the chapter ends. I want to lie and say the missions in Henderson were difficult, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And why? Well, instead of explaining, let me show you. As you can see, I was a walking battleship. Most of my guns were killing zombies in one shot from here on out, whether it be the shotgun that could one shot thugs, the sniper that was capable of doing 30,000 damage in a single shot, the magnum that instantly blew a zombie's face off, or my shotgun. I can't stress enough how amazing the shotgun is, so I cleared out a cinema for us all to play house in, but my precious Harlow was missing, gone, lost in the streets of Henderson. The only thing we could do now was wait for her to find us. So I did a few more missions to distract myself from the pain of losing my waifu and I got in touch with a businessman. He said that he would come save us in a helicopter, so we made an SOS fire. When they arrived, they said women and children first, but climbing ladders was Colonel Hardy's hobby. He just couldn't resist climbing it. Apparently, there was no room for white privilege on this helicopter, so the soldier killed him. We shot the helicopter since they shot our loyal comrade, and now we had to fight horde number 4. However, this horde has no special infected, just normal common infected and frenzied versions of said common infected, and more ammo than I knew what to do with, so I absolutely demolished the hell out of this horde with plenty of ammo to spare. After that, I went to go check on the crashed helicopter, and I found the businessman. He said that he had psychic powers that allowed him to sense and locate lesbians, so he found Harlow using his gaydar, and apparently she was hiding in a geofarm lab, so I didn't waste any time before I blasted a path through the walking corpses, and finally, I found her. She was clearly upset, but I couldn't tell if it was because she was on her period, or if it was because we accidentally abandoned her and didn't even try to find her. I tried explaining to Harlow that I tried desperately to find her, but she didn't believe a word that came out of my mouth. After all, who would believe Perna the liar? So now she wanted to kill me. I would much rather perform actions of the kinky variety with her than fight to the death, but we were beyond civility now, so I had no choice but to fight. Her face had no chance at winning against my shotgun, so she used steroids and a chainsaw to even the odds, but obviously it didn't work. So she did a little dance, and now she was invincible. I could easily dodge her attacks, and they even did pitifully low damage, but that didn't matter if she was able to deflect buckshot with her skin. I didn't want to take steroids since drugs are evil, but then I remembered that steroids aren't drugs, they're just chromosomes or something, so I took the steroids. I performed my invincibility dance, which turned my crappy fury into powerful god tier fury, and I regrettably, shot Harlow's face off until she stopped being alive. I finished off the remaining zombies, I escaped the laboratory using my ninja-like reflexes and a boat, we escaped the island, I mourn Harlow's death, and 9 years later, we're still waiting on Dead Island 2. 
So can you beat Dead Island Riptide with only guns? Hell yeah you can. 